Welcome, I'm Brian Ross, Chief Investigative Correspondent for ABC News. And today we take you behind the scenes of an ABC News undercover investigation. An investigation of Nigerian scam artists who have been targeting millions of Americans with emails that promise a huge cash windfall. One of the victims is a California heart surgeon, Dr. Timothy Sloan, who lost $340,000 to the scammers before realizing a suitcase of so-called black money was just black construction paper, not cash. The scam was to get Dr. Sloan to buy a special, very expensive chemical to clean the money. My so Dr. Mr. Sloan Davis made friend. contact with 2020 Mr. Davison, uh, Mr. Mr. Tepper, Davison, and offered to uh, set up a meeting with the men who had given him the same kind of black money chemical today, washing so. demonstration. And I, actually, I was very 2020 very producer Len Tepper was introduced as a friend of Dr. Sloan. Yeah, we, need this money we rigged a hotel room in New York with hidden cameras and again put cash in a briefcase, $25,000. The men said they needed the $25,000 to buy another batch of chemicals, enough to clean $15 million of black money. The money that we're giving you, the $25,000, is that enough money to clean the entire $3.8 yeah, million? Not, not only the $3.8 million, to clean the entire $15 million. And how long does that take? It takes between five to six hours. When we had heard enough, we brought our cameras out into the open to ask the men a few questions. Yeah, excuse me, excuse me, gentlemen. I'm Brian Ross from ABC News 2020. How much money have you taken from Dr. Sloan? Personally, me, what have you I been, did. You've been to his home? Yeah, I've been to his home. And you have supposedly washed this black money? I didn't wash. Did, did you do that? Did you demonstrate for him? No, we didn't wash. No. Did you go to his home? Yeah, I've been to his home. And you're, you're telling me this is real money? No, I don't know. I don't know about it. That's junk. You know, you, you got him thinking this was real money. How, how could you do that? I'm not the one who did it. He has been You dealing. went to his house and you told him this was real money. How could you do we that? We went to his house. He showed it to us that yeah, he, he has this. What is that? Tell me what that is. I don't know what it is. Is it real? I have not seen money like this before. Do you believe that's real? I don't believe. I have not seen money like this. You know this what this is. This is construction paper, right? I don't know what feel it that, is. Feel that. Come on. That's a scam. Oh my God. Apparently afraid he was going to be arrested, the scammer began to sob. <laughs> Dr. Sloan was not moved. You wanted another $25,000 from me, is that correct? Yeah. And I would have paid it to you because I trusted people and you broken the trust. I want you to leave. Now, he's asking you to leave. <sighs> Two ABC News security guards made sure the men left without incident. We're asking you to leave. Pay me back my money. Now I don't have the three thousand five by the. $330,000. No, doctor, you've been dealing with somebody. It's time for you to leave. Let's go. As our guards escorted the two men out of the hotel, their scam exposed, they left behind their suitcase of black construction paper and one more American victim who had been robbed and humiliated. Shalom, all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Bashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, those are the men that taught me the truth of the Bible through the Holy Spirit. And Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Bashem Rakakwadash, broke a thumb. To the 144,000 servants of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai and the remaining elect of the nation of Israel that scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So, as you can see here, I'm on the page of Yahweh Shai is coming back, and um, this is the elder brother out there in um, GMS, Mississippi. He goes by the name of Kazak. All right, he's actually an up and coming elder within the ranks of Great Millstone, a very edifying brother at that. You know, and he's a great example as to. You know how us younger brothers should walk you know within this faith all right you know he's a prominent member you know within um our circle here at great millstone you know as it says in the scriptures mark the perfect man 
All right, so this is one of those men that you have to mark, you know, and um, you know, watch his lessons because, like I said, he's a very edifying and diligent brother, and the spirit of Yahweh Bashmel Shai is working with this man. All right, you know, as the Lord is, you know, dealing with the men of Great Millstone as a whole. All right, but right now I'm just highlighting and spotlighting this particular brother. You know, that's his spirit. And um, earlier today he done a beautiful lesson regarding, as you see here, the Yoruba people of Nigeria. All right, in which I myself, um, you know, I go back to this tribe in um, in Nigeria, or well, actually my parents do. You know, I was born and raised in London, England, likewise with my father. Um, but my father's father, they both go back to the Yoruba people of um, Nigeria, okay? And um, upon watching this video, which was a, a very, very edifying lesson, Right, so Yah Bashma Shabrakatha to you, brother. You know, if you're watching this lesson, I appreciate this lesson that you've done. Um, but upon watching this video, it was you know resonating with my spirit because um, you know what the brother was going into. I myself, I was looking up maybe about a week or two ago. All right, I was just doing some research on what the term or name Yoruba means. All right, because even me myself, you know, I never knew what that word. Or that term Yoruba meant, okay? And so the spirit hopped on me again about a couple of weeks ago to, to dig into this word. And it led me to the exact same site that this brother um, brought out in his lesson. So I thought it was highly spiritual how you know, the spirit led us to the same site. And I wanted to speak upon this too. So it was just perfect timing, you know, in terms of the brother bringing out this lesson. So now I can land back on what he brought out, which was... Again, very edifying. So you brothers out there that may have not watched this video already, you know, I suggest you go to um, the, the Elder Brothers page, Yahweh Shai is coming back and check out this video, all right? Now, upon my research, when I was looking um, this word up, the spirit led me to this particular thread, all right? And I found an individual, all right, a so-called Nigerian, a Yoruba guy, that was basically denouncing this term, this name, Yoruba, or Yoruba, as it's currently pronounced. Right, and that's what I basically want to, you know, read, you know, and bring out in this lesson and um, further edify on um, the term Yoruba and so called Nigerians. All right, so hopefully, you brothers out there find this lesson edifying. Now, as you can see here, I'm on the website of kawara.com and we're researching what does Yoruba mean, okay. Now, this individual that we're going to read here, he's not in the truth, right? You know, I've proofread this paragraph or what the guy was saying here. And, you know, he's definitely not in the truth, right? So what we're going to read is highly spiritual and um, it's sincere, okay? It's, it's very sincere. Now, it says, we are the sons and daughters of Odu Dua and not Yorubas, okay? And this Odu Dua individual... Um, according to my knowledge, this is uh, the ancestors of right the, the so-called Yoruba people that led our people from the east to the west coast of Africa. Right, when you do your research on this individual or the doer. Right, so reading on it says there are two demeaning and insulting names that the Fulani gave the southerners: Nia Miri, meaning fetcher of water. In reference to the people of Southeast and Yoruba, in reference to the people of the Southwest. Now, the people that you have in the Southeast of Nigeria, you have the Igbo people, all right, which that term or that word Igbo, it really is um, a broken translation of the word Hebrew, okay, which Hebrew in the Lashawan Kodash, in the Paleo Hebrew, is pronounced Iba. And the people that you have in the southwest of Nigeria, um, those are the Yoruba people, okay? Now, reading on, it says, The southeast rejected that name, but the southwest accepted it. The name Yoruba derives from Yoruba, and it means shady and unreliable. I reject that strange name and label, and I hope and pray that the good people of southwestern Nigeria will see the wisdom in doing so too so as you can see here you've got an israelite that is basically rejecting them um, this byword that's been placed upon the yoruba people 
You know, that aligns perfectly with the scriptures because that's a part of the curses that fell upon our people, the Israelites, all right? From Judah, representing you so-called Negroes, all the way down into Issachar, representing you so-called Latinos and Native Americans. And that's why when we go to the book of Romans, the 8th chapter and around the 16th verse, it speaks about how the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High, Yahweh Bashmah Shai, because... Um, you know, the, the, the spirit, which is the Bible, right? The words of Yahweh Bashmah Shai, pursuant to the book of John chapter 6, verse 63. The words that are in this Bible, they basically testify for who we are as a people, right? Our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You know, and the curses that we read about in the book of Deuteronomy, in which I'm going to right now. The curses that we read in, in the book of Deuteronomy, in the 28th chapter, as it says, when we go here to um, the 46th verse, well, actually, before I go to verse 46, let's go to verse 15. It says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken, which means listen, unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh, thy power. And this was our forefather, Marsha, or Moses, speaking unto our people, the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and even Americans, when, when the Lord, Yahweh, but Hashem Yahweh Shai brought our people out of our ancient captivity in ancient Egypt. You know, when the Lord sent Moses to give us laws, statutes, and commandments. Let me read it again. It says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, thy power, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All right? And um, the, the curses that fell upon the Israelites, as I was going to go to, you know, they're, they're for a sign, right, to prove who the Israelites actually are. Because right now there's a controversy on the earth whereby you've got the Edomites, and I'm referring to you so-called Jews out there in our land, the land of Israel right now. You know, the controversy in the earth or the controversy of Zion that's taking place right now is that you've got these Edomites that are claiming to be the Israelites, and that's a falsehood. Okay, and the, the biggest kept secret is that our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, we are the Israelites, okay? And this is what Yahweh Bashma Shai is basically propagating here on the earth by way of his servants, the prophets, all right? He's got these men out there on the highways and byways, and we're basically propagating the message that um, our so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are the true Hebrew Israelites, and the Bible is our constitution, okay? But anyway, as I was going into, when we go here to Deuteronomy 28, verse 46, it says that, And they shall be upon thee, speaking about the curses, for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. All right? And this is how we know who the Israelites are, by literally <laughs> going to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, and reading the curses, and deciphering and matching up with who these curses actually fit today, okay? And what you're going to find out is that these curses fit our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans to a T, right? And I'm going to prove that to you right now as we speak. Now, um, let me see. Yeah, so as I was mentioning, when we go to this article thread here on Kawara.com, um, as I mentioned, you've got this so-called Nigerian or the so-called Yoruba individual that's denouncing the term or the, the name Yoruba, right? Because it basically means to be shady and unreliable, all right? And um, this individual doesn't want to be associated with being shady or unreliable. And the reason why that name has been placed upon these people is because they're Israelites, right? We are Israelites. And this is nothing but the curses, in particular, the curse of having a byword being placed upon our people, okay? I'm going to read it here. This is Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. It says, And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord, and we're reading Lord here in all caps, so this is referring to the Heavenly Father himself, Yahweh, shall lead thee, all right? And the Israelites were led, <laughs> they were led, into West Africa, fleeing Roman persecution. You, know, you can read more about that when you go to the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20, all right? Now, let's look up this word, um, by word, real quick, in the Hebrew, and get more understanding. 
All right, so I believe the Hebrew word here is Shan Yana. All right, that's how you pronounce it in the ancient Hebrew in the Lashawan Kodash. In the Paleo Hebrew, it's Shan Yana. Okay, and it means sharp word, sharp cutting word, taunt or jib. All right, that's what it means. Now, the word we want to focus on here is taunt because that's exactly what um, um, this word. Yoruba is it's a taunt upon the Israelites. Being called a Yoruba is a taunt. Being called Nigerian is a taunt because even that word Nigeria is a byword within itself. Okay, because the word Nigeria simply means area of the niggers, right? Area of the niggers, and that's a byword within itself because we're not niggers. Okay, we're actually the Israelites, you know, of the Southern Kingdom. Primarily Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the so called Negro tribes of the nation of Israel. You know, so anyway, it says the Southeast rejected that name, but the Southwest accepted it. The name Yoruba derives from Yariba and it means shady and unreliable. And this is what um, the elder brother Kazak brought out in this lesson here. Yoruba people are Israelites. Yoruba is a Hebrew word, okay? which means shady and unreliable and deceit, okay? It says, I reject that strange name and label and I hope and pray that the good people of southwestern Nigeria will see the wisdom in doing so too. I am not Yoruba or Yoruba, but an Omo Karo Jere or an Odu Duan and my language is not Yoruba but Anago. We are what we call ourselves. We are not shady and unreliable, Yoruba, and we must not accept names that are given to us by our historical adversaries. Any Omo, Karo, Jire, or Oduduan that continues to call himself a Yoruba is lost and does not know the implications of what he is doing to his own people. He is simply affirming and confirming an insulting label which has deep sinister mystical and spiritual connotations the word yoruba did not even exist until the 18th century and even then most of the tribes of southwest including the oils rejected it due to its origin and meaning the word yoruba is alien which the word alien means strange to our culture and not known in the anago language other do ones please take note the first time the word Yoruba was used as a generic term for all the people of the southwest Nigeria was in the 19th century by Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowther. He did us a great disservice there given the fact that it derives from the word Yoruba which the Fulani used to describe our people. All right? Now as for the Fulani people of North Nigeria, you know, I'm not too um, familiar with that tribe. You know, um, I personally believe um, they might be Hamites. I could be wrong, all right? I could be very wrong because you did have Fulani, you know, go into slavery too. But, um, you know, growing up, from what I was told, all right, from my parents in particular, my mother, you know, she would say that the, the people of the north in terms of Nigeria, they were completely different um, from the southwesterns and the southeasterns of Nigeria, i.e. the Yoruba people and the Igbo people, okay? So, you know, um, it is what it is. This is the the byword that um, the Fulani people gave on to um, the people of the southwest of Nigeria, right? They called them Yariba, which basically means shady and deceitful. Now, reading on, it says, the meaning of the word Yariba is usurper, deceitful, shady, treacherous, cheating, usurer, and double-dealing bastard. Once again, I reject that name. And this is where the name of our forefather, Jacob, comes in, all right? Ya'aikwab in the ancient Hebrew. Because when we go to this here, <clears throat> in the book of Genesis, Genesis 25, we read about the story of Jacob and Esau, okay? Now, for time's sake, I'm just going to go straight to the point. Um, here, here in Genesis 25 
and 26 it says and after that came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's hill and his name was called Jacob and Isaac was three score years old when she bare them right the twins Jacob and Esau in which are so called Negroes Latinos and Native Americans were the descendants of Jacob whose name was changed to Israel which makes us the Israelites okay now when you go to Jacob's name Here in the Hebrew, the name Jacob in the Hebrew is Yaiqab, okay? Yaiqab. And it means what? Hill holder or supplanter. And that ties in with how, you know, we got the blessing. You know, how we got the blessing from Esau, Edom. And you can read more about that when you go to the book of Genesis, uh, the 27th chapter in particular. But I want to focus on uh, the name Jacob and the, the meaning of Jacob, which is supplanter, you know, for time's sake, I don't want to go into that story. But if we used to look up this word supplant, um, let me let me type in supplant real quick, and let's type in synonyms. What we're going to find out is that one of the synonyms is actually usurp, okay, which that goes hand in hand with um, this word or this term, Yoruba. Okay, as you see here, it says the meaning of the word Yariba or Yoruba is usurper, deceitful, shady, treacherous, cheating, usurer, and double dealing bastard. All right, so the words we want to focus on here is usurper, all right, and usurer or cheating usurer. Okay. So let's go to this here on the thesaurus. It says supplant. Now what do we find here? Now remember, this is what the, the name Jacob means, okay? It says overthrow, succeed, supersede, undermine, unseat, <laughs> usurp. Usurp. Now let's go back to what that uh, term means, Yoruba or Yoruba. It says the meaning of the word Yoruba is usurper, deceitful, shady, treacherous, cheating, usurer, and double dealing bastard. Okay. And uh, when we go to our forefather's name, which is Jacob, Yaikab in the Hebrew, right, it means supplanter. And the word supplant or supplanter simply means usurp. And it's very spiritual because any of you out there that may know of any. Uh, so-called Nigerians in particular of the Yoruba tribe you know they're known for being so-called con artists scammers right they're known for being usurpers they're known for being <laughs> you know supplanters if you will you know and, and that's actually a stigma you know but it's all spiritual you know it all goes back to um, you know the, the ways in how our forefather Yaikwab Jacob you know, got the birthright, supplied Esau, Edom for the birthright. As a matter of fact, the Nigerians, they're known for this um, scamming term called 419. Let's go there real quick and give you some information. Um, 419. Scam. Let's see what comes up. All right, let's go here to this article from Newsweek. It says, the origins of Nigeria's notorious 419 scams. And the people that's at the helm of these scams are the so-called Yoruba people, all right, of Nigeria. Now, it says, Nigerian scammers are generally regarded as pioneers, meaning the, the inventors, in the sending of mass letters, messages, and emails seeking to defraud any recipient foolish and greedy enough to fall for their tricks, although all the signs that are the practice has now spread worldwide. Nigerians call scams like these 419, so called by reference to Article 419 of the country's criminal code, which concerns fraud. Okay, <laughs> so you know, I'm not going to read this whole article. Um, I'll leave this link in the description box so you can read it for yourselves. But again, I'm just proving the point here that, uh, you know, the, the stigma that's placed upon 
uh, the the Yoruba people, the Yoruba tribe, it's all spiritual, right? Pertaining to you know our forefather Jacob, your Aikwab, right? Because his name means what? Supplanter, right? And that goes back to how Jake basically supplanted Esau, you know, out of the the birthright, you know, out of the, the promises of Yahweh Bashmel Shai. So that's pretty much where I'm going to end this lesson, and I don't want to make this lesson too long enough like that. I just want to land back. Um, the elder brother Kazak, his lesson that he done on the Yoruba people being Israelites, all right? And um, basically, what's happening right now through the spirit is that Yahweh Bashmah Ashaya is bridging the gap between so called West Africans and, you know, our people over here in the Americas, all right? So called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, because you have a lot of our people on this side of the globe, you know, out here in America, that are very ignorant to the fact that you have Israelites that are scattered around the world. Primarily, you know, out there on the west coast of Africa. And Yahweh Bashmah Shai right now is, you know, putting that spirit to sleep, okay, through his men, right? Primarily the men of Great Millstone from Apostle Taha all the way down, right? So all praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh Bashmah Shai, Bashmah Rakakwadash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, the men that taught me the truth of the Bible through the Holy Spirit. And Yahweh Bashmah Shai, Bashmah Rakakwadash, Brakatham to the 144,000 servants of Yahweh Bashmah Shai. Shalom.